Namaste. So here I am back again in the same room, in the same friend's house, from where the whole Sri Lankan adventure began 12 years ago, almost to the day. One cycle of Jupiter. So now, beginning a new cycle, everything is changing. <laughs> And I may be going to India, or I may just come back here and take a house. I'm not sure. The thing is, I need a quiet place for contemplation. Why? To implement the transcendental transitivity. And what is that? Well, if you remember from high school math, <laughs> hopefully, if your brain cells aren't shot... <laughs> If A equals B and B equals C, then what? A equals C, right? If two things are equal to the same thing, they're also equal to each other. So, in spiritual life, we have the individual, the being, the conditioned soul. We have the secondary or conditioned Brahman, and we have the primary or unconditioned Brahman. So, what we're doing in the Sri Brihad Aranyakopanishad mantra or meditation is first of all, we're making A equals B, the individual soul equal to the conditioned Brahman. And how do we do that? By meditation on and identification with a deity, one of the symbols of Brahman in the conditioned world. And there are many of those, many, many. The sun, the moon, the sky, air, water, fire, earth, consciousness. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. There's so many deities and so many expansions of Brahman that you can worship as Brahman and the idea being to attain unity. Now, I attained unity with Shiva about two years ago in Rishikesh, and I talked about that. I've been talking about it ever since. But beyond that, when one attains identification or unity with the deity, that's the A equals B. And the B equals C part is the fact that the conditioned Brahman is nothing but the unconditioned Brahman or the superior Brahman plus some limiting factor, which we call an upadhi. And in the case of the gods and goddesses, that's called the Ishatvamupadi. That I am the Lord of the universe, I have perfect intelligence, I have complete knowledge, I am present everywhere, and I have total power over the material energy. So the Jivatvamupadi, the individual, becomes equal to the Ishatvamupadi, or the all-pervading Supreme Lord. That can be Vishnu, Shiva, Devi, Ganesh, you name it. I mean, there's so many different gods and goddesses. It's up to you. It depends on your taste. You have to be attracted. You have to have a taste for this particular deity to be able to meditate and worship effectively. In the Brihad Aranyakopanishad, it's the horse sacrifice. But it could be any sacrifice where one comes to uh, identity with Virat, the all-pervading Godhead. All right. So then B equals C. Conditioned Brahman is nothing but the unconditioned Brahman plus an upadi, plus a covering, a limiting adjunct. So... Simply by removing the upadi, 
they become equal. And actually, they're always equal because it's something added to the original. So as soon as you take it away, then the original Brahman is there. And finally, now we're in a position to offer the conditioned Brahman into the fire of the consciousness of the Supreme Brahman. And you see, you have to get to the first stage before you get the intelligence of how to do the next stage. This is the thing. This is why it takes some faith, takes some knowledge and some confidence in that knowledge. So I've been studying this stuff for over 50 years now. I think I have a pretty good handle on it because I'm open-minded and I base all my conclusions on ontological analysis and reasoning. The same kind of reasoning that lets you uh, create theorems like if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. So in the same way, by analyzing the Upanishads and especially Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, I came to this conclusion and was able to extract, abstract, and generalize the theorem, the message, or the method of Brihadaranyaka Upanishad to include all the gods because Brahma Sutra said, and remember we studied this in the Brahma Sutra series, that all meditations given in the Vedas are equivalent. And there's, there's one factor that you have to keep in mind, that they all refer ultimately to the Supreme Brahman. In other words, all the deities mentioned in the Upanishads and the Vedas and even in the Puranas are all ultimately simply faces of the Supreme Brahma. So, you know, Krishna, Vishnu, Vayu, Nrishinga, um, Agni, Indra, I mean, and, and of the Devis, there's so many, you know, thousands of Devis, but they are all just particularized aspects of the Supreme Devi, who is Maya, the conditioned Brahman. And she reflects the unconditioned Brahman, and that becomes Shiva, the Supreme God, from whom all others are derived. So then, that's why he's called Ishwara. He is the controller, and the others are controlled. So this is our understanding. This is our realization. If you don't get this, if it seems very difficult to understand, it means you have not gone through our back catalog. You have not done the homework or studied the scriptures sufficiently to have the background knowledge to understand these concepts. So I'm sorry if you don't have that knowledge, <laughs> then you have to have some faith that this is true, that this works. It certainly is working for me. And I'm very glad, I'm very happy. Like I said in yesterday's video, <laughs> I'm ecstatic to have finally solved this problem, at least to my satisfaction. If you don't want to believe it, that's fine. You know, it's no problem for me. Doesn't bother me in the least. But you should understand that I have reached these conclusions not just through thinking, but through experience. And by applying these conclusions and getting the result, at least enough of a result that I can be confident this is the right way and we can proceed further. So stick with us. We're going to keep going with Rihadaranyaka Upanishad when I get back from India, get settled in a new place. And then we'll see how this whole thing unfolds and enables you to reach the highest realization. Aum Tatsat. Aum Shakti Aum. 
ओम नमः शिवाय